I- I'm sorry. It said some bad things ab- about the 308 Winchester. Hundreds of people have written in and some even called to tell me I was wrong. The 308 Winchester is the greatest cartridge in the history of the world. It's as good as the 30 6 and it's shorter. So please forgive me. I know not what I do. Please forgive me. But I can't start loving you. (laughs) Now I owe you an apology for that silly introduction and singing. (laughs) But I wanted to grab your attention to make a point. The 308 Winchester is still one of the great cartridges of the world. Um, It may not be the ultimate and the best, but it does really match up to the 30-06, despite the larger case capacity of the 30-06. I want to cover that today and put it into perspective and even compare it to some even larger 308 cartridges and just help all of us to appreciate what it does and what it maybe doesn't do. And that involves the high BC bullets we're all starting to appreciate and love. So stay tuned, a real hard look at the 308 Winchester on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Now, to start this comparison and showcase the 308, let's admit that it is about 100 feet per second slower than the 30-06, but not always and not in factory ammunition. Hand loaders can routinely get about 100 feet per second more velocity out of the 30 at 6. But if you're buying factory loads, they make some that will exceed the velocity of the 30 at 6 with a 150 grain bullet, perhaps a 165 grain bullet. And if you just be one of those rare people who shoots 130 grain or even 125 grain bullet in the 308, I think it's just right there, neck and neck with the 30 out 6. And it is a surprisingly effective little light bullet. Now, you don't get your high um, ballistic coefficient numbers. It's not a really aerodynamically efficient bullet. So don't go there for that. If you want to go long range, that's when you start to get into some problems with the 308. It just doesn't seem to have the horsepower, the powder capacity to push a heavy bullet really effectively. Now, there are plenty of guys who use their 308s with hand-loaded high BC 190 to 200 grain bullets, but it's just not optimized when you start looking at 308 diameter. And that's what obviously we're doing here. So step up to something like this 210 grain bullet from Berger and ouch, you're you're just going to start to suffer with that 308. And I've got some numbers here to show that. Doesn't mean it's not going to work, but I do want to put it in perspective and compare it to some of the others. First of all, let's stick with that 150. I'm going to actually use a 151 grain hammer all copper bullet here because I find that I can push those things about 100 maybe even 200 feet per second faster than a lot of traditional bullets. The Your mileage might vary on this, but I've kept things consistent. I used the same bullet for both, 308, 30 at 6. And I pushed them to pretty much maximum velocity. I looked at the hand-loading manuals. Some of them were 100, 150 feet per second slower than the others. So I balanced it out, and I think I gave the 308 a pretty high number at a safe level of pressure. 2,950 feet per second. The 30 out 6 I did at 3,050 feet per second. Now, as I mentioned, your uh, factory loads, you might actually get the 308 to be going faster. But this is just to give you an idea of a fair comparison. And of course, the thing we want to know is what's happening out there at distance. And 300 yards is, is kind of like all oh, what's ways out there for most of us. And we've got 1,811 foot-pounds of energy out of that 30 out 6 pushing that 151 grain bullet in comparison to 1,601 in the 308. That's still more than 100 feet, foot pounds of energy more than is traditionally recommended for taking elk. So I'd say you're good with that fairly light bullet, which is going to get a lot of penetration, by the way. Those copper bullets always do. They just retain their weight and they penetrate very well. So I think it's a viable elk cartridge. And obviously it's going to be more than plenty for deer and lesser animals. So getting out now to 600 yards, which I think is maxing out to 308 for sure. And it's further than I recommend anyone shoot with anything. Uh, It's just getting to be a little bit too long of a time of flight, but each individual can make up his mind on this stuff. But here's the point. 
out there at 600 yards, you're going to be dropping with this 151 grain bullet in the 308 almost 70 inches. And ooh, you got seven inch advantage with the 30 out six. Just that 100 feet per second advantage out of the 30 out six in its initial velocity is amounting to seven inches less drop at 600 yards. But most of us aren't all that concerned about drop anymore because we can compensate with a good scope and known distance measured by a laser rangefinder. We were probably more concerned about is that wind deflection because that's what's so hard to call. The wind deflection with the 308 in this bullet is 37 inches. It's 35 inches, 35 and a quarter with a 30 out six. So not a huge difference there. So once again, if you know your trajectory tables, you've got a good range finder, a good scope with multiple reticles or a dialing turret so you can compensate, you can enjoy hunting with a shorter, lighter, handier 308 short action rifle. And I don't think you're handicapped at all. And that's where I think I've been wrong about criticizing the 308. But now let's go to these higher BC bullets, which of course are both longer and heavier. And again, 308 and 30-06, starting this one out now, 2,450 feet per second out of the 308. Why is that? Because <laughs> this bullet is 200 grains. And you don't often see factory am ammunition with 200 grain bullets. I've got, what, 150 grain here. What's this one? 150 grain again. Here's some Remington. We've got 180 grain on top, 165 grain in the middle, 150 grain. That's kind of the, the big three for the 308. And that's because the manufacturers realize that past about 180 grains, your 308 just doesn't really haul the mail. So starting the 308 at 2450, the 30 at 6 at 2650, once again, we're starting to show the advantage of that additional powder capacity in the, 30, in the 30 out six. So we're gonna jump right out to 600 yards where we can really tell the difference. Almost 90 inches of drop out of the 308, 72 inches out of the 30 out six in advantage. Wind deflection, 25, almost 26 inches out of the 308, only 22, 23 inches out of the 30 out six. That's starting to make a difference that could spell success or disaster. Now, to really appreciate the 308 cartridge and what it does versus the 30 out six and on up the line is to go up the line. And the 300 Winchester Magnum, of course, is the sort of all time classic, most popular 30 caliber Magnum. Not so much recoil that most of us can't handle it nicely. Um, and it really does a job. And it's been proven over and over again since it came out in 1963, I think it was, maybe 64. So, 200 grain bullet, and this is a, a high BC bullet, 0.626. I forget which one I used on that one. Could have been the Acubond Long Range, could have been the Hornady ELDX, but it's a long, sleek bullet at 200 grains. And that 300 wind mag, because of its additional powder capacity, bingo, pretty obvious, is going to drive that 2,900 feet per second. You may get a little bit more, a little bit less, but compare the 308 to that. And once again, you got 90 inches of drop at 600 out of the 308, and the 300 wind mag is only dropping 55 inches. And it's drifting about six inches less in the wind. That's with the same bullet. Now, most of your bullet deflection in the wind is due to the BC of the bullet more than the velocity. And you can see it by this major comparison difference between the drop differences and the deflection differences. Only about, what did I say, six, four inches of difference in deflection. But still an advantage. And look at the energy. 1,911 foot-pounds of energy left in at 300 wind mag, but only 1,294 in the 308. So that's more than enough energy out of either one of them for deer. And I wouldn't hesitate to take an elk out there with that much energy in my bullet. I might hesitate to shoot that far with a 308 on an elk or even a 300 wind mag. But this goes to show you what that extra powder does. It's not so much about the extra reach and all or the extra energy. It is, ah, let me rephrase that. It's about the reach more than it is the energy. Uh, certainly the energy helps, but the ability to reach farther, especially back when we didn't have laser rangefinder, that was a big deal. And that's what drove the development of magnums. It wasn't so much for the power as it was for the reach. Now, if we want 
more reach. We're going to jump up to the 3378 Weatherby Magnum, same bullet, 200 grain, starting this one off at 3,300 feet per second. That's 400 feet per second more than the 300 wind mag. There's going to be a little bit of recoil involved with this one. And you have to live with that. Plus, you're going to need a longer barrel to get this thing, probably a 26, if not a 28. So things get a little bit unwieldy in the hunting fields. But let's just look at the sheer numbers. You're only getting 36 inches of drop out of that 3378. And again, we're getting 90 inches out of the 308. Oh my gosh, what a difference. Wind deflection, 25, 26 inches out of the 308 and only 17 inches out of the 3378. So there's your huge advantage, but you're paying the price in powder, cost, and recoil, and a heavier rifle. Um, looked out there at the energy, 2,563 foot pounds of energy left in that bullet out of the 3378, way out at 600 yards. That is absolutely massive. It's, it's as much, uh, almost as much as the 308 has at the muzzle with that same bullet. So crazy numbers there. But those are the things I wanted to talk about in putting this 308 in perspective. I appreciate all you folks who love the 308 Winchester. I know what it does and I know what it doesn't do. And the reason I tease you so often about this is because some people just think it's like I said at the start of this, it's the greatest cartridge in the history of the world. Well, it might be your absolute favorite and it certainly does have a lot to recommend it. And if you like a short action, lightweight rifle, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, I think you can pretty much figure that. Anything you can hunt successfully with the 30 out 6 you can do with the 308. But once you start getting out there past 300 yards, and especially way out there past 500 yards, I think you're starting to bark up the wrong tree for a, a good long-range cartridge. Um, Excepting, of course, our target shooters, you know, guys who really work on their hand loads and, and just get the absolute perfect 308 load for their rifle, know their drops and deflections, know their wind drifts so darn well, can do pretty well with the 308. But I think it's been proven time and time again that the higher BC bullets going at roughly the same velocity or slightly more, I hate to say it, but 6.5 Creedmoor, it makes it easier to even hit those long range targets with it. Probably won't have as much energy out there, but then again, it's just a high enough BC difference. It could, even with the lighter bullets out of the 6.5. So, yes, I'm sorry for always insulting you folks who love the 308 Winchester, but don't take it personally. It's really the 308 Winchester that I'm laughing at, and it's not really laughing. I'm just poking fun at you guys. It is a great little cartridge, and believe it or not, I actually have some rifles chambered for it. Don't use them very often, but they are out there. So if you're looking for the ultimate 308 cartridge for your style of hunting, consider these things. Do you really want one that's going to be great for deer and maybe elk up to three, 400 yards with the lighter bullets? But if you want to go to the heavier bullets for hunting, I think you might want to start taking a look at the more powerful cartridge as much as you love the 308 Winchester. It's just not the ultimate cartridge in the history of the planet. So please forgive me <laughs> for dissing the 308 Winchester again. Hey, this is Ron Spomer. If you want to take me to task and chew me out some more, surely go ahead, feel free to do it. I think this was an accurate assessment of the 308, but I'm always happy to have my mind cranked open and some good new information shoved into it. So drop me a line and we'll see you next time on Ron Spomer Outdoors, an honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.